Hello everyone, and welcome to today's Mod Spotlight, where we will be covering Sushi Go Crafting, a mod that allows you to grow crops, explore to find fish, and process your own ingredients to make the perfect roll of sushi in a very unique way. So, without further ado, let's begin. So, the first thing we're going to start off with is crops and world gen. So, Sushi Go Crafting adds in a whole bunch of different crops to help you make sushi, including cucumbers, soybeans, wasabi root, sesame seeds, which currently don't have a use, I will say, rice, and of course, avocados. So, for all of these, they are grown and harvested like regular crops. For rice, you need to put it in one block deep of water to have it grow properly. And for avocados, of course, you can find these trees around your world. Breaking the leaves may get you saplings, and it's as simple as right-clicking to get the avocado out of the tree. So, with that, we can jump into our little pond here to see what else we have. Of course, we have ourselves seaweed, essential in making nori. This grows pretty much in any ocean intermingled with kelp, so you do have to pay attention to the slight texture differences to harvest the right plant when you're out in the ocean. It also introduces us to two new animals, the tuna fish and the shrimp. In addition, when killing or hunting for any fish, killing the entities instead of using a fishing rod will yield you an item called Tobiko every once in a while. The chance is about one in four, and this is also an essential ingredient that will be shown off later. Next up, we have some outdoor items, I like to call them. They could be used outdoor, indoors, you could include them in your kitchen. I personally like to have them outdoors. We have this bad boy here, which is just a block of iron with a lever, or really any redstone input, a piston facing downward, and another block of iron down here. This is used for when you harvest your seaweed, dry it out in the furnace, just like you would dried kelp, combine it into a dried seaweed block with nine dried seaweed, and then you take that dried seaweed block, stick it in this very nifty contraption here, and flick down the lever to get yourself nori sheets. Now, the amount you get each time does differ. As you can see, the first time I got eight, this time I got seven. You can get as low as about five, I believe, which I just got, and up to, I want to say ten. I think it's five to ten. It might be four to nine or five to nine, something like that. But this is how you get nori. There is no other way to get nori. This is how it happens. Next up, as you saw over there, we have soybeans being harvested, as well as if you have played vanilla Minecraft for any amount of time, you know that you can milk cows. So, if I have, let's say, a bucket of milk here, I can come up to one of these fermentation barrels, give it a nifty old right click, that milk will go into this fluid slot, and over time, it'll process itself into cheese which, once again, will be used a little later on. So, that is use A for our fermentation barrel. Use B for our fermentation barrel is sticking water in here instead of milk and putting ourselves some soybeans in there to get out soy sauce. Of course, once again, this process does take a little bit, so, you know, just give it time. To craft yourself a fermentation barrel, it is as simple as seven any planks, really. Any wooden planks, modded, vanilla, all of them work in a U-shape. Same with the pressure plate on top. So any 
modded ones work, vanilla ones work. And then in the very middle, you want yourself a furnace. And that is going to get you a fermentation barrel. Next up, we have four more, or I guess technically five more things in here. So let's start off here with the rice cooker. So, rice cooker, let's cover the crafting recipe first here. You take six iron on either side. On the very top you have a light weighted pressure plate, and for those of you who don't know what that is, that is a golden pressure plate made with two gold ingots. Light weighted pressure plate on the top, iron ingots down the sides. In the very middle, once again, we are putting a furnace, and on the very bottom we are putting a redstone dust. That's going to get us our rice cooker. Now, once again, just like the fermentation barrel, you can right-click water into the fluid area here. This one can hold eight buckets, while the fermentation barrel can only hold two at a time. Stick some fuel down in this red slot here. I'm using coal. You can use pretty much any burnable fuel. I believe even a fermentation barrel. No. Never mind, you can't use a fermentation barrel. And then, you can throw in rice. Now, you can only put one rice into each of these slots at a time, and each piece of rice yields you 50 grams of cooked rice, which can stack in a single item up to 2,000 grams. So if we take our rice, we can come over here to our next item, the cooler box. For the crafting recipe of the cooler box, all you need is seven snow blocks in a U-shape, an iron trap door, and any chest. Modded, vanilla, all of them work. That gets you your cooler box. And the cooler box is pretty useful. What you can do is, with the ingredients you craft, you can throw them in there, like so, and... Let, let's say you have a bunch of Tobiko from going out and killing a whole bunch of fish. When you throw it in there, it'll combine it up until it can't anymore. And once it can't combine it up anymore, it'll move it to another stack. So, makes easy organization of all of the items you throw in there. For example, let's just show you again with the rice here. As I throw the rice in, you can see it slowly climbs. And if it can't combine two rice, it won't. Moving on. Up next, we have ourselves the cutting board and the cleaver knife. Let's start with the cutting board's recipe here. Cutting board, what you need to do is you need to take three of any log, throw it in here, and I believe it is three of any stone slab. So this can be prismarine polished granite, red sandstone, mossy cobblestone bricks, anything that is of the stone variety, even quartz and purper from the end can be used. Three slabs of that over three logs or wood variants gets you your cutting board. Simple as that. Next up we have the cleaver knife, which as you can see here is for iron place like this, along with a stick here. And that's going to get you your cleaver knife. Once you have these two items, what you can do is you can throw any amount of fish on. Right now I just have a single raw cod, but if I had a stack, you can see I can throw the whole stack on at once. It won't process the whole stack on at once. It'll process it one by one. And basically what you do here is you can cut up things, for example, from salmon, you get yourself salmon filet. From cucumber, you get yourself cucumber slices. From wasabi, you get yourself wasabi paste. However, cod here is a little bit of a different story. I know you're expecting a cod filet or something along those lines, but no. When we cut up cod, we get imitation crab. This mod doesn't add a crab mob in, so instead what they've opted to do is Cutting up cod gets you imitation crab. And once again, just like with pretty much everything else, imitation crab can be thrown in the cooler to get yourself some nice imitation crab, all nice and neatly organized. 
Now for the piece de resistance, we have ourselves the roller. There are three string in the middle row, six bamboo, three on the top, three on the bottom. That gets you your sushi roller. And what you can do with that is pretty much craft every single piece of sushi that's in this game. So, if we click on this, we can immediately see I've left things in there that I shouldn't have. But we can also see that there are six different types of sushi. We have maki, we have gunkan, we have California roll, we have nigiri, we have onigiri, and we have temaki. Now, starting off with the maki, as you can see, on the side of each ingredient here, there are little green kind of selectors for how much you're adding in. And those little gold dots will appear whenever you discover the perfect weight for something. So usually the default for a new sushi roller, all of them will be at the bottom here. And you'll throw in your ingredients like so. Roll it up and you'll get a sushi roll that says almost hollow because you've barely put anything into it. And through trial and error, you can find the correct amounts for each different type of sushi to make what is called the perfect roll. And of course, to pretty much everything, you can always add soy sauce and wasabi paste. So, if we take everything out here and go in here, we can look at all the different types of sushi, because there is quite a significant amount, especially once you get into the California roll section. So for maki, there are five types. You have your salmon maki, your tuna maki, your avocado maki, your cucumber maki, your, and your crab maki. The gunkin has three types, your salmon gunkin, your tuna gunkin, and your wakame gunkin. Now obviously we haven't covered anything called wakame. It's as simple as throwing seagrass and cooked rice and nori sheets into your sushi roller when gunkin is selected. Now we move on to the California rolls. There are very many different types of these. So, for example, we have your tuna California rolls, and each of these rolls with a different fish is going to have tobiko on the outside and cucumber, no tobiko with cucumber, tobiko with no cucumber, neither cucumber nor tobiko and you can, can kind of see you can do the same thing except instead of cucumber you have cheese so you can do that for those and then you enter your salmon once again tobiko and cucumber toby no tobiko cucumber tobiko nothing nothing and then tobiko cheese and just cheese and finally the same for crab next up we have our nigiri there are three types of nigiri, your salmon nigiri, your tuna nigiri, and your shrimp nigiri. There is only one onigiri. It is onigiri. It is just rice and nori sheets. Couldn't remember the word nori there. And then you have your tamaki, which are salmon, tuna, shrimp, and chicken. Now, each of these gives you a different kind of status effect. Um, there have been three new status effects added by this mod. They are called small bites. Small bites allows you to, when eating a food after you've eaten this salmon maki, so you take a bite of the salmon maki, you eat it, and then you eat a golden apple, let's say. There is a small chance that that golden apple will not be consumed when you eat it. So you basically get two uses out of it. Next up, we have tuna maki. This has the effect of acquired taste. And this applies to all rolls with tuna, all rolls with salmon, so on and so forth. So your tuna maki gives you acquired taste. And acquired taste allows any food you eat after eating your tuna maki to give you extra hunger points. So if I eat a golden carrot and let's give it a random amount of food, let's say it fills you five hunger bars. Instead, 
that golden carrot might now fill you six, right? It's going to up the amount of food you get from an item that you can consume when you have acquired taste. Avocado roll, as you can see, there is no effect for avocado. Avocado has a multiplier, so when you have it in a sushi roll, it's going to multiply the effect by, let's see, what does avocado slices do? It multiplies the amount of time by 1.2 and increases the level of the effect by 1. Next up, we have crab, which very simply gives you speed. So if you have any crab food, that's going to give you speed. Now let's jump down to shrimp. Shrimp gives you a effect called steady hands. What steady hands does, if I'm chopping up cucumbers on my cutting board, I have steady hands. That's going to make it so that I get more cucumber per cucumber chopped, right? So when we go over here, we can see, oh, cucumber slices amount 100 out of 400 grams. That's without steady hands. But if I have something with shrimp in it and it gives me steady hands, then when I cut up this cucumber, it might give me 200 grams of cucumber slices instead. Chicken tamaki, which is our special tamaki here. Um, chicken, bird, slow falling. Simple as that. And does our wakami give us anything? No. So the wakami, the seagrass, does not give you any special effects. Finally, if you add wasabi to anything, you're going to get yourself some fire resistance. So if you're going to the nether, sushi rolls are probably going to be more effective than good old fire resistance potions in some cases especially because they are cheaper to some extent. Soy sauce increases the level by one on everything it's added to. Cheese gives you saturation. So if you have your good old California cheese salmon roll, that's going to give you some saturation. Tobiko is another multiplier. It multiplies the time and effect is on you by 1.5. Sesame seeds can't be used, but if they could be, they would multiply the time they that something gives you by two. Gosh, the weather. Imitation crab, once again, that was speed. Cucumber does multiplying time by 1.25. And rice multiplies the time by 1.75. Which is interesting, because I believe you use rice everywhere. Yeah, you use rice everywhere. So you're going to get a base nearly two times to any thing you add and the thing about this is it is kind of like the maximum amount of time you can get will be when you're at the perfect weight if you go over or under that's going to lower the amount of time you get from any status effects and that there is the sushi go crafting mod so if you enjoyed this mod review please leave a like if you want to see more of us, please consider subscribing. It would mean a great deal. And I hope you all have a good day.